I know balancing isn't exactly at the top of Game Freak's priority list, but this is still an interesting thing to think about, and this is still something I'm figuring out kind of as I go along. It's still kind of the seed of the idea in my head, but the general crux of it has been with me for a while. Now, ostensibly, this is about the Lottie twins in relation to Pursuit, you know, their biggest check across the generations. Uh, and what happens when Pursuit is not a factor, you know, whether it's because it's special, like in Gen 3, or uh, when it's uh, not in the game at all, like in Gens 8 or 9. So, uh, yeah, and it, it's... In, yeah. All right, let's try that again. Beyond just uh, being about Lottie versus Pursuit, it's more about the concept of uh, when... Y you know how sometimes you don't realize that a strategy is, if not broken, then still really, really good in an earlier gen until you kind of see the lack of counterplay for it in a later gen. It's like, oh wait, that's actually really good. And... Uh, I kind of have that reverse effect with the Lotties, because I'm wondering why they're not going crazier in the newer gens. Now, I know... Uh, my uh, Gen 8 knowledge is very outdated. Uh, I think I have a grasp on the basics, but the nuances and tenets are, are of the tier, the deeper ones, are beyond me. And uh, Gen 9, I am not completely clueless about, but pretty close. So and I just kind of wonder that kind of thing. But... Uh, it, you know, to get back to the overarching point, it's that uh, with it's not just uh, seeing oh this strategy is good in one gen maybe it's good in another. It's about how Game Freak's balancing choices kind of go back and forth, you know. And I know that's why I said they're not really doing it with uh, balance or competitiveness or anything like that in mind. But you know, a change they might make in one gen might completely counteract the balance of something they introduced in an earlier gen. And what I specifically have in mind for this is I remember there was some UU tier, I think, it, it, of course it was Gen 7 UU, where Conkeldur was absurdly broken because Flame Warb only, now only uh, gave it 6.25% recoil, we'll just call it 6. It only gave it 6% recoil uh, per turn. And previously, Flame Orb Conkeldur was always going to be a threat, of course, but the recoil of 12.5 per turn, or let's just call it 12, I know it adds up to 25 in two turns, but just for parity's sake. Um, yeah, the recoil of 12 per turn adds up very, very quickly. And so that makes it... I mean, obviously, this is not the only factor in dealing with Status Orb Conkeldur, but the recoil of Flame Orb, the immediate recoil of Flame Orb was so bad that a lot of the time, whether it was uh, Conkeldur or Heracross or Hariyama before it, then those uh, Guts Fighters would often go for Toxic Orb. Or uh, Swellow in uh, Gen 4 UU, for example. You know, they would often go for Toxic Orb, because it's like, oh, well, doesn't Toxic, you know, increase over time? It's like, yes, but it starts out way slower. First turn, 6.25. Second turn, 12.5. I think, anyway, I forget if that's the uh, exact increase. But the point is, you have to be on the field for quite a bit of time before Toxic Damage actually out-damages uh, Burn. You know, and these Pokemon hit very hard and fast, and, well, maybe not fast, but they, uh, because they're usually not speedy, barring Swallow. But they are not trying to stay on the field for an extended period of time. So them getting uh, worn down by Toxic Orb is generally not going to be a factor. Whereas it does make it easier to play around with the more immediate, with the greater immediacy of Burn. So then you have Gen 7, and everyone universally welcomed the Burn nerf, right? And it's like, oh, 6.25, this makes it so much less uh, difficult to deal with. I have a whole video explaining uh, Broken Aura's Burn. Not that Aura's Burn is broken, but people kind of almost retroactively realize, oh, this Burn feels like it just destroys my Pokemon immediately in Gen 6, as soon as they got a taste of it being uh, nerfed in Gen 7. And that's kind of what I mean uh, with regard to this, you know, retroactive idea. Uh, or, you know, the opposite. But... Well, sticking to that, 
that whole uh, retroactive uh, idea. Oh, it's so much easier to deal with scalds and will o wisps, whatever. You know, my Pokemon, my Ferrothorn can actually absorb will o wisp now because it doesn't get worn down. With lefties, you know, neuters it uh, just like it might sandstorm on a sand affected Pokemon in, you know, Gens 3 through 5. And then there's also like the, yeah, okay, that, that is true. You know, nobody's going to argue that lower burn damage is a good thing, except for the fact that you forget that flame orb. And I realize this is a specific example, so, you know, the good outweighs the bad. But it's an example of, you know, not taking that into consideration. It's like, oh, actually, now we uh, self status with flame orb. You know, which uh, Flame Orb was introduced in Gen 4 when it was 12.5. It had, that was a third generation with 12.5 burn. You know, that w didn't look like it was going anywhere. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's like, oh, well, of course it's not that bad. But now it's like, oh, wait, now you can burn yourself and you take minimal recoil the whole time. So, you know, and especially with Con Keller using Drain Punch, it's especially terrible. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so that's an example. And now it's for the subject of the video, you know, the Lotties. Uh, in Gen 3 Ubers, Lotties, you know, either one, are flawless. They are the best. Uh, and you can, and very often do, run two Lotties on the same team. I remember Genku had a team like this a long time ago, and it really took off. And the whole concept is, because the whole thing is, like, you can't punish them for it. You know, like, yes, okay, there are other Pokemon you have, you want to use on your team. So not every team is going to do it, obviously. But pretty much every team is going to have one of the two Lotties. And, I mean, it depends on what you want your team to do, of course. But, why wouldn't you also want more of this? You know, now, not every Pokemon you don't want twice, because, yes, stacking weaknesses, blah, blah, blah. Like, I'm, some team, okay, I was going to say you don't want two T-Tars. But some teams would d generally like two T-Tars. But... The thing is, T-Tar is slow and has weaknesses that can be exploited very easily. So that's uh, where the issue comes in. And in Gen 3 Ubers, the complete dearth of weaknesses uh, that the Lotties have means that it is impossible to pun- just about impossible to punish them. It's like, oh, you stack up on their weaknesses. Oh, like what? You know, it's, um, it's kind of like... Uh, bit of an extreme example, but kind of like bringing Snorlax in GSC or Taurus in RBY. You know, it's like, oh, well, your opponent can't really punish you for it. Now, it's not a direct one-to-one, -one, but, you know, you know your opponent's going to bring Snorlax, or, you know, a more apt comparison, you know your opponent's going to bring Zapdos in GSC, and it's like, okay, well, what are you going to do about it? How are you going to punish it? You know, it's uh, because some is first of all, Zapdos is something you expect to face anyway, but, you know, even if you told your opponent, I'm bringing Zapdos... That does very little, realistically, you know, if, unless we get into counter-teaming cheesy stuff, but that's, that's more specific. Uh, <laughs> you know, even if you told them the Zapdos set, there'd be very little they could do about it, because that's just kind of the Zapdos you expect to face every time. So, uh, yeah, in the similar vein, in a similar vein, the Lottie twins are uh, fairly unpunishable in Gen 3 Ubers. And so you can stack them. And a big part of it is, of course, Pursuit is special. And over the generations, you know, over the tiers, whether it's Gen 4 Ubers or, you know, many OUs, then a big part of it was Pursuit. Uh, because, and and here's, the, here's the real kicker. The reason why it's, you know, so much tougher to punch the Lotties, not just because of their lack of weaknesses, but also because they're fast and because they're offensive threats. Now, if you were to stack, you know, a Pursuit Tar and, I don't know, a DD Tar, then, like, they're great and everything, but they're also not shredding pretty much the entire metagame with ease you know and in gen 3 you've got a uh, soul do lotties you know with the type based special chart with the with the type based chart uh physical special split sorry type based physical special split and then in gen 4 on they have draco meteor and uh, even post fairy types then it's like okay well bad things tend to happen when you cannot forcibly remove latios from the game or lotties from the game because Latias definitely does it too. In fact, uh, when Latias was banned from Gen 4 OU uh, for the first time uh, back in 2010, uh, which it definitely deserved at the time, I think. Uh, I don't really begrudge that ban. I think, you know, Mentz was worse, but Latias, they exacerbated each other, whatever. But uh, that was a another issue. It's like, this thing is so stupid to deal with if you cannot pursue it, you know? And as great uh, Pursuit is, and I do miss Pursuit, I also kind of wonder... It, about the balancing thing 
does pursue or was pursue you know kind of a broken element to keep other broken things in check because you know what was broken what was the first broken thing in pokemon you know psychic right and then they added not just dark and steel but you know pursuit that's super effective against psychic then they made it physical you know so and uh it feels like a lot of that kind of stuff and if not just psychics then you know look at how crazy ghost types are running uh, look at how crazy ghost types are in uh, Gen 8 without Pursuit. You know, you think Pursuit T-Tar would let Dragapult run around like that? Good lord, no. Uh, so, yeah, with the uh, with the Lotties, then it's all about if you don't have Pursuit, it's, and, and please don't miss it. I know people hear the most extreme versions of everything, but I have to stress out loud just to, just to make it very clear. No, Pursuit is not the only way to deal with Latios. That is so obviously not the case. Please do not mishear me as saying that. But, as I um, will demonstrate with many examples, with Pursuit, it is, it is a lot a lot harder to deal with them without Pursuit. And because they will come and they will bombard you repeatedly. And even if you think, oh, well, Fairy Types is not about Draco Meter. It's like, okay, well, go, go into Oris and use a team with Clefable as your only way of staving off Latios. And watch as Spec Psychic just tears you a new one. So, yeah, I really, uh, it's, it's something like that. And, in fact, with uh, Gen, with the last three Gens giving Latios crazier and crazier tools, you know, not just a Mega Evolution uh, in Gen 6, that wound up being better in Gen 7, which is already a great OU Pokemon, actually. And it's even tougher to pursue because it's uh, physically bulkier. Now, it's not staving off T-Tar easily by any means, but it's also got the big EQ for that and Magearna. Anyway, point being, in Gen 8, it gets, like, Aura Sphere and Future Sight? Specs Future Sight Latios. You know, when uh, that was announced, I was like, in a metagame without Pursuit, this is like the scariest possible thing I could imagine. I don't know why people don't use that more. Yes, it can. And now in Gen 9, I mean, it's got like a boosted lust or a buffed luster purge uh, with 95 BP. Uh, and it's got um, something, a flip turn, for God's sake. <laughs> I mean, you give it a flip turn, even if T Tar comes into Pursuit, it's like, oh, whoops, never mind. <laughs> Uh, you better get it in as Lottie comes in on a double switch, because otherwise you're just getting completely ruined. So, uh, now again, this is like a newer gen thing, and I know there's power creep and more fairy types and all that. But, uh, let me just, so I guess this is more of a balanced thing in general, I'm using the Lotties to make that example. But, like, let's say uh, Gen 4 OU, right? So in Gen 3, well, Gen 3, let's go chronologically. Gen 3 Ubers, Lotties can't be pursued. Their weaknesses are Bug, Ghost, Ice. Uh, and dark, obviously, but there are no dark moves in Gen 3 Ubers. I mean, T-Tar is very, very rare, and it's not like Crunch really threatens a calm-minded Lottie twin anyway. And, uh, excuse me, pollen in the air, spring, allergies, you know? Anyway, uh, and because Gen 3 also means that T-Tar does not get the special defense boost in Sand yet, so it's really getting walloped by those boosted attacks. And uh, now, and, and in fact, this lack of pursuitability is also a big part of why Latias. It's been theorized for Gen 3 OU a lot before. People have played a lot of uh, meta games, or a lot of meta games, a lot of test uh, tournaments with it. It's like, oh, it's not really broken, but it's not really good for the tier either because it's so hard to take down and it's such a threat. You know, even without Soul Dew, and you know, and T Tar Crunch is still barely, you know, okay, I'm not going to say barely scratching it, but it's not doing well against it, and it calm minds and makes the crunches and pursuits weaker, so it, you see how that whole thing gets exacerbated, and then in Ubers, I mean, when there's, uh, you don't have to worry about getting chipped by sand because Groudon and Kyogre are running things, and, uh... Uh, and you're just destroying everything immediately because you have a free call mind as soon as you come in. For those who don't know, pre-Gen 7, Soul Dew was a free call mind for the Lottie Twins. Uh, makes me shudder to think that people are like, Oh, Soul Dew, doesn't that just give like a 20% boost to their stabs? And like, yes, and it has done that for uh, eight years this September, or uh, November, sorry. Uh, which is frightening, but <laughs> yeah, uh, so Gen 3 Ubers, you can't pursue it, and then Ice Beams don't really threaten it either, because well, I mean, okay, they do when they're coming from a boosted Kyogre, uh, but that's still, you know, a game to be played, and a Bug, I mean, there's Heracross Megahorn, but Heracross is not the Pokemon you slap on every single team, and Shadow Ball is generally a pretty bad move 
and it's mostly good because it hits the Lotties. Besides Lottie, it doesn't really, like, you hit Mewtwo with it. You can hit Mewtwo with a lot better than Shadow Ball. You know, that also, also it's other things. But with Lotties, I mean, that's why uh, Deoxys attacks Shadow Ball is such a spammable move because it threatens the best Pokemon in the tier. It outspeeds and threatens them. You know, that's the combination. It's not just that they have weaknesses. It's that they're so fast. You know, and they're not even like the fastest Pokemon around. It's that they are as strong and as bulky as they are for being so fast. And have such good typing because, I mean, my god, they can't even be worn down by hazards in Gen 3 because they're spikes immune. And they have 32 PP recover <laughs> on top of this. I mean, no, to be clear, it would be absurd to deal with the Lotties even if they had 16 PP recover. That is just like overkill. But. Uh, although it does let it sit, on, it does let them sit on Blissey. It does, you know, demand Blissey's move set be uh, tweaked to deal with them more directly. And see, even that is crazy. You know, you can't even necessarily just out bulk them. You know, it's. I mean, this is part of why dealing with Lottie is uh, so ridiculous in general. But uh, that's uh, to. Sorry, I almost lost that thought. You can't really just sit on them and be like, oh, well, I'll permanently wall you. I mean, Blissey does do that, but it's not just, oh, throw your special wall at it. And I'll give you a more modern example of that. Still old, but modern, more modern in terms of mechanics and everything. So let's say you have a specially defensive steel against Lottie in Gen 5. And, you know, a bulky specially defensive steel. Jirachi or Bronzog or even Metagross if you want to go that way. Or even Ferrothorn. Well, the fact of the matter is, if you don't if you let Lottie come in repeatedly, your steel will eventually lose. Whether it's HP Fire, or Rain Boosted Surf, or just getting draco a bunch of times, or getting tricked. My god, the reason Scarf Tar started becoming popular in uh, Platinum was because, well, also Rotom, but because Latias' trick was ruining stall teams, because in Gen 4 it doesn't get, just get Draco Meter, it also gets Trick. And uh, it was, you can't even throw your bulk at it because, oh, well, now it's got a choice item, now it's completely worthless. And so T-Tar is that combination of, I don't mind the choice item, in fact, I kind of, well, it doesn't like specs, but whatever, and I will make sure the Lottie can't do it again. That whole dynamic comes from, well, you have, and, and this is why something like Weavile, as great as it is, uh, in, in Gen 6, I mean, uh, isn't the same as Titar because it can't actually switch in. Titar switches in, takes the hits, and doesn't mind the choice item, and... Uh, actually physically removes it from the game. What else does that? Mega Scizor and Metagross in Gen 6? And, uh, well, not 7 because Mega Metagross is banned, but Mega Scizor could do that there too. But uh, Lottie is, at that point, Lottie isn't even running choice anymore. It's running Mega. And, oh, and these uh, same issues are very much present when dealing with Mega Latias. Mega Latias, I remember there was a period in Gen 7 where people were, like, losing their minds over Mega Latias plus T-Spikes. And, I mean, it's a great Pokemon. It's so bulky that even the physical pursuiters, it starts being an issue because it's just, you know, regular Latias, but really, really bulked out. And on the physical side, that doesn't just help it deal with things like Kartana, but it also makes it more difficult for those traditional checks. You know, your T-Tars and uh, your Weaviles and your Mega Scizors. Uh, to, I, I remember there was an SPL game a few years ago where Mega Latias was just recovering off Mega Scizor U-Turns. It was ridiculous. You know, you know what you would have to do for a regular Latias to do that kind of thing? You would have to run Reflect and a lot of bulk. And, uh, yeah. And you would have a very limited moveset. You know, you and Mega Latias, no, not a problem at all. You know, it just does that just by being Mega Latias. So, yeah, absolutely insane. Uh, and it, it goes back to the whole balancing thing. It was like, well, Pursuit was kind of our main way of dealing with this thing. And when you don't have Pursuit, then it becomes ridiculous. And so that, going back to that Gen 5 example of the, oh, I have a specially defensive steel. It takes Draco Meteor well. You know, it only takes 30% or less, you know, or let's say even taking 25. You know, that's, that's great. And uh, it's like, okay, well, what happens when it comes in again and again and again? And this is the oldest story in the book in, for, uh, for Gen 5 Rain teams. Gen 5 Rain teams are very threatening, but they cannot deal with Latios, and that is their biggest flaw. And the Gen 5 Rain teams that can deal with Latios are those that run Scarf Scizor, which is another one of these Pokemon that can absorb the trick and also physically remove it. But it also has to be a lot uh, more careful switching in, because even Draco Meteor, even though it's resistant, does a million. You know, Rain Surf does a million. Uh, so... Yeah, Scarf Scizor, and of course, when you're running Scarf Scizor, that is also good for Alakazam. So it is a good Pokemon, of course, I wouldn't say that, but, you know, it's a very limited option. So, 
But the fact is, Lottie will come in over and over, and you can try to limit it, but the fact of the matter is, Lottie's typing in bulk is so good that, you know, including Levitate in its typing, of course, uh, that it's going to find those opportunities, and it will Draco you over and over and over and over. And... And you can't let it Draco you over and over, because as bulky as you might be, you know, you're going to take damage over the uh, course of a game. And, and and not to mention that even if you do have that bulk, and let's say you have longevity, let's say you have a Wish Protect Special Defensive Draji, which, by the way, is a bad Pokemon. It is the most exploitable thing ever. But let's just say, even if you have this bulkiest of bulky Pokemon, let's say you have Chansey, let's say, you, uh, because even Blissey's not enough, because uh, Blissey is scared of Spec Psyshock, uh... I tried to say Psycho Shock, and then I stopped myself because it was translated as Psycho Shock when it first came out in Japan. But let's uh, let's say even you're afraid of Spec Psy Shock, and you want whatever whatever they're going to throw at you with Latios, it will not you know break you, Chansey, right? And then you know all these Pokemon, Bronzong even, will just get tricked, and that's it. And that's why it's so limited. And that's why when people say, oh well, why use T Tar all the time in Gen Five? It's like, well, Latios. <laughs> You know, Latia and Gen 5 OU has that very similar dynamic to Gen 3 Ubers in that you can run Latia. Like, I know Finchinator does this all the time. I think he runs Latios on every team because it's so good that you can't punish it. I mean, teams come with uh, specially defense invested, you know, special defense boosted in Sand, uh, Pursuit, Physical T-Tar in Gen 5, and Latios is still an issue. It's absolutely ridiculous. And, yeah, so, uh, now, it's not as free in that dual Lottie teams are, I mean, I know it's not a perfect, a perfect or a, an exact comparison, uh, not that it was supposed to be, but the same dynamic is very much there. And, uh, but you can't run dual Lottie in Gen 5 as much, because now you do have to be more cognizant of that weakness. But, since we figured out how to do with Latios and Reuniclus, and Alakazam, of course, although Alakazam is weak to everything. But yeah, Alakazam, you know, crumples to pursue. But if you can figure out Latios and uh, Reuniclus and uh, Alakazam, and sometimes even, like, Jellicent, then you can stack weaknesses like that and to, for the overpowering strategy that they have when, uh, with their synergy. Which, you know, is a uh, relatively new development in the grand scheme of competitive Pokemon. Then, yeah, of course you can make it work with Dual Lottie. Because, also, it's fast. And, in fact, if I was going to make a Sand Team perfectly, you know, made to counter raid, I think I would use Dual Lottie. Because they have a tough enough time dealing with one. Like, borderline impossible. You know, you throw two at them and they're just completely cooked. Uh, so... Slight over-exaggeration, but they're also really not going to do well. You know, you, it might also be overkill, but... Anyway, you get the overall idea. And even in uh, Gen 4, when Latios came back, uh, I remember noticing there were games, and you, know, you still see them sometimes, where if Specs Latios was allowed to dart in and out, like I remember Roscoe had this uh, SPL game against Deep Blue Sea, where Latios was allowed to switch in over and over and over, and Deep Blue Sea was running a team with, uh, which was very like post-Dragon era. And it just allowed Lottie to come in over and over. And even though he had a wish call mind Jirachi, and, and an, uh, did he have an Empoleon? No, it might be. No, Roscoe had the Empoleon. Whatever, he had, uh, he had two steals, I think. And one of them was a very bulky wish call mind Jirachi. And Specs Lattice was still a threat. It was switching in at low health. And using that speed and that just good enough, uh, and that bulk, which, you know, carries it even when it's not in pristine condition. They're just launching Draco after Draco after Draco and dropping things. And that kind of thing is a lot of why... I mean, don't get me wrong, that kind of pursuit... Uh, pursuit is a very necessary component of many kinds of DPP offense anyway. But with Latias, it's also... You know, like, whenever I see these stall teams that just go pure bulk, pure... It's like, you realize how free it is to mess these up with Trick? So, I'm not saying Pursuit is necessitated, but, you know, it ties into the overall thing about uh, balance. But... Uh, yeah, so Gen 4 Ubers had that, Gen 6 OU, I mean, Gen 6 OU, you were running Pursuit anyway, because Lotties were, like, the two checks to Keldeo and Mega Charizard Y, and surprise, surprise, you Pursuit them, they, those kind of go crazy. Uh, Pursuit was good there, too, but, you know, you then notice when T-Tar was being phased out, 
then, or not being phased out, sorry, when it was, uh, when it wasn't being used as much, then Spex Latios started being used, and I was like, oh my god, this thing is just as scary even when there is a fairy type on the other team, because Draco, Psychic, Surf, uh, HP Fire if you want, Shrick, <laughs> so, yeah, have fun, you know, even if you don't want to predict, uh, with coverage, you know, oh, I don't want to Psychic the Clefable because then Ferrothorn might come in, okay, well, you Trick and you ru ruin either of them, so, yeah, I I, uh, I think the point has been made because even if you're you know it's like oh well now Lotties isn't as, the Lotties aren't as difficult to deal with because they whatever they, because of new fairy types power creep whatever it is you know I still see Lottie go crazy so like um, in U U it's like well of course it destroys U U not just because of the power because U U for a long time now has had a lot of really strong Pokemon you know uh, but. Because it is so ridiculous to deal with, you know, without pursuit. I think it's a big part of it. Now, anyone free to, I would w love to learn uh, why. You know, I really do think that, you know, if anyone out there is interested at all, uh, Future Sight Specs Latios in a modern gen. I, I don't know if it just struggles to switch in now or what. I mean, okay, probably it does. Uh, gen 9 OU is insane, but in Gen 8 OU, you know that tier which has all the switch moves and pivoting and famous for taking long, I mean, you get Latios in over and over in that kind of thing, and it will bring you results. There's no pursuit, my god, you know? No no Mega Stones or Z Crystals to block its trick? Ugh. Specs Future Sight Latios. And, I mean, you think Sloking Future Sight plus something is bad. I mean, and I know Sloking is bulk and teleport and regen and all that stuff. But, you know, the power of... Because Future Sight is such a strong move on its own. And when you make that Future Sight come off a Specs, you know, Pokemon as strong as Latios, that just sounds terrifying. So I think it should be tried. For, uh, maybe I'm nuts and uh, don't know what I'm talking about, and there's not much to it. But that is something that I think it should be tried. Now, Gen 9 OU I'm willing to accept is different. But hey, in Gen 9, the Lotties can also Terra... And from my understanding, they are destroying UU because Terra Steel Lotties, you know, a levitating steel that's fast and naturally threatens the Pokemon that hits steel super effectively. Good lord. So that's basically all from me. I hope this was informative, interesting, useful, fun, uh, whatever, enriching, stimulating, whatever it might be for you. Uh, it's an interesting thing to think about. There are many other examples, I'm sure. Like, I'm still very mixed, for example, on Dark and Steel. Uh, or, or Ghost and Dark not, no longer being resisted by Steel in Gen 6. Like, yeah, so I can see where it's coming from, especially uh, in light of fairies coming to play, but I also... I don't know. It's it's a strange one for me, because I, I don't like the... You know, like it, Actually, it's a perfect example. You know, Ghost no longer resisted by Steel, and then, you know, a couple gens later, they remove Pursuit, and now Ghosts go absolutely crazy. And I don't think they would go nearly as crazy if Steel still resisted Ghost. And yeah, okay, we can't resist Fairy and Ghost at the same time. That might be too much. But even something like, you know, Knock Off... Be, or Weave, actually, that's another great example. Weavile uh, Knock Off, which is one of the scariest moves in Gen 8, then... That is partly scary because you can't resist it with a steel, you know, and I don't know, I, yeah, so you get the idea that I'm uh, trying to make here. So, thank you so much for watching slash listening, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one.